just to ask the public's indulgence, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes. We have one more councillor that's just on their way. So uh, thank you. Actually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're just gonna we're gonna call the meeting to order. It's uh, six oh four. Um, Councillor Nay's on her way, but just uh, running a little late. So um, we won't start the public input, but there's a fair bit of procedural pieces we need to go through in any case before as part of this. So um, it'll take us 10 minutes or so, I think, to get through this part, and then we'll invite the public forward as part of this. So I will now bring the meeting to order. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Oak Bay's public hearing. My name is Kevin Murdoch. I'm the mayor of Oak Bay, and I'll be chairing tonight's public hearing. This pertains to bylaws 4730 and 4731. Uh, at St. David. Um, we acknowledge, of course, this, that before we start the meeting, that we are holding this meeting on the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish people, specifically the Lekwungen speaking people known today as the Squamalt and Songhees First Nations, and that their connections to these lands continue to this day. I just want to advise everybody that the public hearing is being live webcast, and the recording will be archived on the district website for future viewing. Uh, personal information, including your image and personal opinions, uh, will be collected and, and, of course, disclosed as part of council proceedings on the video. When you're presenting to council, if you're acting as a representative of a resident uh, of Oak Bay or speaking of another party, please ensure that you're not disclosing any personal information uh, about that person if you don't have consent to do so. Uh, just a quick overview of our protocols in uh, public hearings. Just going to ask everyone wishing to let you know that everyone wishing to speak, everyone will have an opportunity to speak. Uh, we try and ask people to limit their initial uh, comments to five minutes uh, or less. Uh, and of course, if we run out of time, we'll, we'll that just gives everybody a chance to speak. And if you want to come up a second or third time, uh, we will allow that to have happen. Uh, once everyone's had a chance to speak, uh, you can speak again. Uh, it's just, if you just ask uh, specifically to keep your comments respectful of council and of staff uh, and of other members of the public. All comments are to be directed to this body, to mayor and council, and must be related to the proposed bylaw. The purpose of the public hearing uh, is to give council an opportunity to listen to the views expressed by the public. Uh, the public hearing is not an opportunity, unfortunately, to, uh, to hear uh, detailed information about the application. The opportunity occurs through previous meetings uh, and on the staff reports that accompany this agenda package. Uh, for those people present tonight, a public hearing binder that contains all written submissions is available for review if anyone wishes to comment uh, specifically on some of those submissions, and that's on this table over here. As chair, I reserve the right to conclude any presentation made by any member of the public, council, or staff that does not relate to the proposed bylaw is disrespectful towards any other person or is repetitive of views that the individual speaker has already made known to council. Finally, council members are here to listen to the public's opinion with an open mind. No one has prejudged the outcome of this application. I'll give a quick overview of the order of business, 
and then we're going to have to wait at that point to uh, for uh, Councillor Nay to arrive before we start uh, doing some of the formal receipt of the data. But the order of business, just so you understand what's happening here, is what's, there's seven stages to a public hearing. First, uh, planning staff will be asked to introduce the proposed bylaw. Council will formally receive all written submissions uh, that have been provided prior to the public hearing. Uh, any late submissions uh, that are coming forward will be read aloud and formally received. Uh, the applicant will have the opportunity to present the proposal if they wish. Council will ask any clarifying questions that this body has of the applicant or of the staff. And then members of the public will be invited to provide comment on the bylaw. The public hearing at that point, uh, once all the people have had a chance to speak, is uh, recessed uh, by council motion. And then today uh, at 7 o'clock uh, or at the end of the public hearing, whichever comes last, uh, the, uh, the meeting will uh, we'll move into the council meeting. Uh, the public hearing is not the point that we deliberate. Uh, we just we do that in the following council meeting. So at the end of the council meeting, we'll move into or at the end of the public hearing, we will move into the council meeting. And with that, I'm going to just wait. Uh, actually, I guess we can probably do the. No, I, I'll wait till uh, Councillor Nay is here to hear the entirety of the of the public uh, public hearing uh, data. So with that, you can relax for a minute or two while we uh, while we await her arrival. Look at that, right on time. We're gonna step into the, uh, into the actual agenda of the night. So if I could invite staff, if they would please introduce the, the purpose of bylaws 4730 and 4731. Uh, Ms. Jensen. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, the first item on this evening's agenda is bylaw number 4730 to consider a heritage revitalization agreement for 1416 St. David Street. <clears throat> If adopted, the building would be retained in its current location and require ongoing maintenance. It would also facilitate a three-unit multifamily development within the existing legal non-conforming duplex, which currently holds a third unit. The agreement includes variances that would be required to proceed with the development, including, as mentioned, permitting that third unit, varying the occupable height from 4.57 meters to 7.13 meters. And to clarify, this is for the existing floor height where the upper floor area would now be used for the third unit. It is not a physical change to the height of the building. It would also vary parking spaces to allow for four on-site parking spaces instead of the required six and to not require any covered parking spaces. Uh, this is proposed in order to retain green space on the site. For information, heritage revitalization agreements are provided for through the Local Government Act, which contains provisions for agreements to be used as a means of allowing redevelopment of a heritage property while respecting its heritage character. For example, an agreement can set terms and conditions for items such as use and density, which would then take precedence over other district bylaws. Its primary intent is to preserve the heritage home while allowing some form of benefit to the owner, so long as the provisions of the agreement are agreed to by both the owner and the municipality. The process to heritage to designate this building is running concurrently through bylaw number 4731. The existing residence at this address was designed and constructed for William and Edith Coltman, who were the owners of the Coltman Lumber Company in Souk. The residence is characteristics of a Dutch colonial revival style and has characteristics such as the gambrel roof with bell cast flare, lap wood and shingle siding, a mix of windows and an asymmetrical front entrance. As part of the revitalization agreement, the owner has entered into a covenant to be responsible for the ongoing maintenance of the on-site sanitary sewer utility until such time as appropriate servicing is installed along St. David Street, as well as a housing agreement that would retain the three dwelling units as residential unit, as rental units. The housing agreement is located in this evening's council agenda for consideration of the bylaws. Uh, given that bylaws 4730 and 31 are running concurrently, it may be appropriate for council to receive input from the committee on both these bylaws at this time. 
Thank you, Ms. Jensen. And it is appropriate, I think, for us to have that input at the same time. Um, we just need a motion to receive the written submissions. Move receipt. Second. <coughs> second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Um, has the corporate officer received any new uh, submissions after 3 p.m. today that are not part of our agenda package? Your Worship, there was none. None. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, if the is the applicant here tonight? Uh, and if they are, then I would invite the applicant, if they wish, they come forward and provide a, uh, a presentation as you see fit on the application in front of us. So good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Russ Collins and with Zebra Group. And this is David Yamamoto, also from Zebra Group. So we're here tonight representing the applicant, Charlotte Bowman, owner of 1416 St. David Street. So I'd like to start by thanking Council for the opportunity to speak this, this evening. We realize that we have already made a presentation to you at the last committee of the whole meeting in July. So we will endeavor to keep it brief. As you know, we have an application under a heritage revitalization agreement to allow for the addition of a third suite in the existing legal nonconforming duplex at 1416 St. David in exchange for the total upgrade, rehabilitation, and heritage designation of this building. This house is one of few remaining examples of the Dutch colonial revival style, which is characterized by a gambrel roof, bell cast eaves, horizontal soffit brackets and dental trim, Palladian, oriel, and coral stained glass windows, and lapwood and shingle siding. The house was built in 1911, and in 1940, it was converted into a legal duplex. In 1962 and 63, two additions were added to the main floor. In 1975, an unauthorized third suite was added to the attic and has been operating as a third unit since that time, so that's about 44 years. While the house is located in a predominantly single-family area, there are a number of multifamily dwellings in the immediate vicinity. Most notably is a six-unit townhouse development directly across the street. As well, there are numerous multifamily buildings less than half a block away on Oak Bay Avenue and Newport Avenues. So this application proposes exterior changes, including removal of the contemporary additions on the west elevation, resulting in a smaller building footprint than what currently exists. So this is on the, the rear of the building. Reconfiguring a number of windows back to the original 1911 design, a new more sympathetic metal roof for structural, environmental, and aesthetic reasons. The landscaping will include an increased urban tree canopy from 20 to 36%, a decrease in the front yard hardscape from 45% to 25%, the application allows for four off-street parking spaces, two electric car charging stations, and a designated bike storage area. This proposal preserves and enhances the current streetscape by adding significant landscaping screens to the parking area and opening the front to, an ex to accentuate the views of the home from the street. It maintains the current scale of land to building ratio, complementing the stature of the other houses on St. David Street. And canvassing of the neighborhood took place on three separate occasions starting in mid-October of 2018. A total of 22 houses were visited, 10 were in support, 5 were neutral, 3 were against, and 5 were unavailable. We believe this proposal embraces many of the objectives of our official community plan. It provides alternate housing options, it protects our heritage buildings, and maintains the urban tree canopy. Both the OCP policies and the district's heritage plan support the retention of heritage homes as well as protection of streetscapes. The OCP indicates that triplexes are an appropriate form of infill housing. So in summary, this proposal provides alternative housing options, increases green space and urban canopy, maintains and enhances the current streetscape, retains our community heritage, protects our vanishing neighborhoods, 
So we feel that this proposal ticks all the boxes in the OCP and is a win-win for our, our, our client and the community. We hope you as council agree with our interpretation of these policies and as recommended by the staff in the planning department and the heritage committee who actually referred to this uh, HRA as one of the best ones that have ever come before them, that you will support this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. You caught me unaware just so fast and wrap that up. Is there, uh, if you don't mind waiting there, at this point we'll open the floor to questions of, uh, of council. Anything else you wish to add? No, we're good, no, okay. We're good. Uh, are there questions of the applicant or staff, uh, Councillor Patterson? Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for the presentation. And uh, we have had correspondence, and I have had quite a few people asking me about this application. And so um, I'd just like you to know if you could tell us a little bit about the use of m the metal roof, it, because I think there are a lot of people that feel that the modernistic type of metal application in this, in fact, would detract from the heritage. So perhaps Mr. Collins could just give us a few comments on that. Um, Mr. Collins? We've, we've talked about the roof. The roof that's on the building at the moment is actually metal. Um, we've spoken with our client and we feel that it's an inappropriate roof because it's um, not contributing to the character of the house and we think it would look nicer with a different roof. And then we spoke with, um, I'm trying to think of, like John's, um, what's his position? John Dam. John Dam, it was, John he's a, um, her our heritage consultant. And he actually said that a metal roof, there were buildings back in th this time period where they did have metal roofs, and that if we keep the colors of the metal in a non-shiny, um, muted. muted color, th that actually it was in keeping with some of the roof designs of the time. And our client would like to c do water collection and doing a, um, a cedar roof. Like she wants to use the water collection for watering the gardens and so on. And it wasn't a decent roof for it to collect water because it was the cedar, I'm assuming, uh, she said to us, was um, toxic. toxic. Yeah, and so we felt that this was a better roof for her because her intention is to actually collect rainwater. So there's a few reasons why we're doing a metal roof. Also, it's... Like the, the quality of the cedar you get nowadays is not la going to last a long time where this roof could last many, many years. Any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, this one perhaps for our district staff. I'm just wondering um, if we have, independent of this application, been advised of any problems related to parking or um, uh, di driveways being blocked or anything of that nature with transportation issues on St. David. Would that be to Mr. Horan or to Mr. Mr. Anderson, can you answer that uh, question? Your Worship, we haven't received any complaints regarding parking. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Are there other questions of the applicant or staff? Councillor Zolka. Uh, thank you, Chair. A qu question uh, through, um, probably I'll start with staff. Um, uh, our uh, OCP and the Oak Bay Heritage Plan um, make reference to uh, heritage conversions of, uh, of, of uh, some of these older buildings to allow for multiple um, apartments, let's call them that, or multiple units within them. Uh, I was wondering if uh, staff could please um, uh, uh, compare and contrast uh, this application with uh, the gen generic heritage conversion. Does this generally uh, align with what, we're, uh, what the OCP and the Heritage Plan call for in that area, or is there something else that uh, I'm missing? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jensen. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I think essentially you're asking two questions. So the heritage version, heritage conversion, character conversion, they're typically referring to the same thing where you would take a, a, an older home and convert it into to one, two, however many suites that might be depending on the size of the home. Uh, the official community plan, this, this would fall in the established neighborhoods designation, which would contemplate uh, from single family homes up to triplexes. So this would fit into that. And uh, if you don't mind, on, on with respect to the heritage plan, um, in terms of uh, uh, saving uh, um, homes and uh, especially designated homes, and um, yeah, uh, I think uh, the, the concept of heritage conversion generally imagines that the, if a single family home is being turned into multiple 
uh, apartments, but uh, in this case, they already are multiple apartments. So it sounds like uh, there's no real conversion is needed here. I just wanted to sort of just ask whether there's, again, so is there anything I'm missing on that? Ms. Jensen? On the site, you currently have a legal non-conforming duplex. Uh, the original residence was converted to a, uh, the duplex back in the 1940s, so it retains that legal non-conforming status. Uh, there is currently, as, as Mr. Collins mentioned, though, there is a third unit that was within the building, so that would be the unlawful unit, so the conversion would actually be taking the duplex and turning it into three units. That would be the conversion. Thank you. Uh, are there any further questions of staff or the applicant? Uh, I have just one question. Uh, this springs out of another uh, conversation we've had on a, on a, on a upgrade to a duplex. Um, my understanding is where uh, units that are currently rental or, or non-strata that get converted have to come back to this this table. Uh, if this uh, is there any mechanism? What is the mechanism in the future? Should this uh, property want to look at stratting uh, the units in this in this building? Because we're now changing the the use to multiple uh, multiple units. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, later on this evening on Council's agenda, you will see the housing agreement in place for this site as well. So if Council chooses to move forward and give forth reading to these bylaws tonight, uh, that housing agreement would stipulate that two of the uh, units could be used as rental only with the owner um, re residing in the third unit. Thank you very much. Any further questions? I'm not seeing any. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And at this time, once you signed your name, so you can just uh, you can go back to the into the audience, and uh, we'll invite people coming forward. Uh, at this time, I'll welcome anybody who uh, wants to speak to this item is invited to come forward uh, and speak to the microphone. Uh, your name and comments again may be recorded in the minutes of the public may be recorded in the minutes of the public hearing and form part of the permanent public record. Please speak your name uh, clearly in your residency and just write your name on the piece of paper so we spell it right in the records. Um, just start by if you don't have to do this, but we ask politely if you would uh, start by saying your name in the municipality of residence. Uh, if you have a if you're in favor or opposed uh, and want, uh, you can say that that's helpful at the beginning so we understand that and then provide your comments and I'll. I'll keep track of time, and if for over five minutes, I'll let you know, and uh, welcome. And you need to turn the microphone on there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll begin again. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to this matter this evening. My name's Sandy Beeman. I live at 2034 Gorman Place in Langford. I'm not a resident of Oak Bay. My company provides real estate development consulting, primarily on public sector projects. I've worked in the real estate industry for over 40 years, and for the last 25 or so on major projects. I provided a letter in opposition to this application to Mayor and Council on behalf of a number of people who live in the St. David Street neighborhood. My company's name does not appear on the letter as I'm providing my comments and insights as a citizen without compensation. In speaking with the neighbors, I was able to articulate in land use language the reasons why the application seemed so unfair to them, and I captured those in the letter provided to you. Real estate development occurs at the intersection of land economics, social needs, and political mandates. The possible results of the interplay of these factors can be subtle in appearance but significant in effect. I'm here tonight to provide reasons why this application should not be supported by Council, and in my letter I highlighted three reasons not to approve it. Inadequate consultation, misinterpreted heritage justification, and the negative effect on neighboring property values. I'll focus my remarks on the latter two which intersect in this matter. When I reviewed the application and considered it in the context of the neighborhood, and as someone who spent decades doing financial modeling and development structuring, it struck me that this application is really a redevelopment application dressed up as heritage revitalization. The economic aspects of adding an additional suite increases the density of use on the property, and this has a significant positive effect on value. The revenue from an additional suite will increase the value of the property by many hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
This is very attractive to the developer and will fund the renovation of the property. Unfortunately, it ignores the negative effects on the neighboring properties and amounts, in my opinion, to a transfer of value from the neighbors to the subject property facilitated by the district in return for a heritage designation. This is grossly unfair to the neighbors. The heritage designation focuses solely on the architectural style referred to as Dutch colonial revival. In 40 years of dealing with real estate, I've not heard of that style originating as it does from another time, country, and continent. It's a mystery to me how that can be considered our heritage. This focus on the style of construction completely ignores what I understand to be the most cu important cultural attribute of real estate, which is its use. We organize and regard real estate by its function. Its adherence to that use over time creates heritage of place. The provincial guidelines for establishing community heritage, heritage registers instructs a community's historic places should reflect the community's heritage values. The heritage of St. David Street is as a single family home district. The style of the houses on that street are varied and not consistent with respect to architectural style. What is consistent is the use, single family homes. The other owners of homes on that street have invested in their properties and renovated and maintained them using their own resources without seeking subsidy from the district while maintaining the heritage of the street single family occupancy and well-maintained older homes. There are no houses falling into disrepair due to a lack of a market for them, with the exception of the property in question. It has not been offered to the market as a single family home, but instead has remained unused for some time and now is seeking a subsidy from the district to pay for a conversion to a triplex rental property. As, all as I said at the expense of the neighbors. I believe the owner should be required to bring the property into repair as a single family home or offer it to the market and allow someone else who respects the nature and heritage of St. David Street to renovate it as a single family home. As somebody who doesn't live in your community, it's my opinion that the heritage of Oak Bay is as a community of successful and prosperous people. That's commendable, aspirational to others and I encourage you to celebrate it and continue your heritage. In the instance of St. David Street, preserve its single family heritage. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Borman. Would the next speaker like to come forward at this time? You just have to push the button on the front there and it'll be live. Again, if you just give your name and residence, municipality residence to start. Thank yes, you. good evening. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Peter Curran. I reside at 1392 St. David Street, the immediate neighbor to the south of the subject property. I would like to record my opposition to the proposed rezoning application at 1416 St. David Street. Firstly, as Mr. Beeman just mentioned, I believe the public and council have been provided a staff report that misrepresents the results of a very brief consultation that categorizes the results regarding the, this proposal as generally favorable, when in fact that's not the case. I've taken the liberty to produce a copy of the consultative map from the report and then have, a, and then have another that accurately records it in red who is against the proposal in the immediate area of the subject property. And as, if I could, I'd like to circulate those. You provide may, some accuracy. just provides a record to us, to the uh, staff as well. And we'll have to uh, record, receive this into the record. Can we do a motion to receive it into the record at this time? Move receipt. Aye. Second. Moving and second, just moving receipt of this into the record. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion to receive this into the record. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? None opposed? Thank you very much. When you look at the map, what you clearly see is that the report 
calling the um, calling that the response from from residents was generally favorable is inaccurate and to suggest that because someone isn't home and and to have no representation of that there's many opportunities and were many opportunities and this is what I mostly heard from neighbors we've seen people coming and going from the property many many times when others were home it wouldn't have been very difficult to get that to complete that and not require us to go out and and actually uh, provide something that accurately represents what the residents were feeling the original map misrepresented to the public that most were in favor as i mentioned for this spot rezone triplex that's not the case as you see before you a rezoning process should be sound in process and accurately represent the facts. The public consultation facts presented in the proposal do not do that. It's a very important decision that Council has before it this evening, and there's a lot of residents here, neighbours of mine, that want this decision based on accurate information. Similarly, the proponent's developer, very soon after Heritage Revitalization application sign went up in front of the house in April of 2018, began deconstructing the house. Any tenants that were living there had to leave and, next, and the next months were spent removing the entire interior of the home. To those of us living in the neighborhood, this was a clear sign that it mattered little what we thought about the proposal as they were moving ahead regardless. Nothing says we don't care like a complete dismantling of a project that could go either way could stay as, uh, as it was or, or move forward in, in, the, in the way that the proposal suggests. The proponent never spoke a word to us during the noise, the dust of the deconstruction. Now the house has sat gutted for over a year with no one living there under the presumption that this is going forward, slam dunk. And there has unapologetically been, and the site has unapologetically been used as an informal works yard with dump trucks and building equipment being stored there and utilized regularly, so much that the bylaw officer had to come out. The way I read the Local Government Act, Division 14, Section 528, if a non-conforming use, in this case the legal non-conforming duplex, authorized under subsection 1, is discontinued for a continuous period of six months, which in this case it has, any subsequent use of the land, building, or other structure becomes subject to the land use regulation presiding, which in this case is the single family zone. I feel that you're not considering the correct proposal. It should be from a single family zone to a triplex. That's the, that's the proposal before you tonight, I believe. I'm troubled by these clear misrepresentations that are instrumental to land use planning. Who is in favor for the proposal, who is not, and anything goes attitude when it comes to local government act and following those guidelines regardless when a non-conforming use is no longer a use. I'm troubled that we as a community strongly sent a message to those running in the last municipal election that Oak Bay residents did not support spot rezonings and wanted more adherence to the OCP. Some of you even campaigned on this notion that single spot rezoning battles were not the way to effectively increase the housing stock. Yet here we are, neighbors behind me joined together to battle a single spot rezoning. I just have to point out you're about a minute over your allotted time. So okay. if and you don't I'm, mind uh, just wrapping it up, you're welcome to come back again. I just want to give everybody. And thank you, Your Honor, Your Worship. Please put a stop to these contentious one-off spot rezonings and vote against this proposal. You promised us a better way of doing things and there has to be a better way than this. Thank you. Thank you. And will the next speaker come forward, please? And thank you for writing down your name. Oh. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Laura McLean, and I am the owner and resident of 1454 St. David Street, which resides two houses north of the subject property. 
Um, I'm also coming to you not only as a concerned resident in opposition of this, but also as a professional real estate appraiser, uh, 10 years accredited with the Appraisal Institute of Canada. <clears throat> so my opposition stems on three main points, which I feel I'd like to highlight, um, and also uh, you've, you've heard some from my neighbors as well, so I just wanted to highlight those uh, not only as a neighbor, but from my professional standpoint. Um, so it has been noted that the current uh, property has legal non-conforming use um, and its zoning per the zoning map of the municipality is RS5, one use residential. So I believe this application should start from that as the baseline. Um, any other uses, legal or not, um, including the third suite that was put in later, um, is not reasonable. But we need to go from what was adopted in 1986, which was the RS5 zoning, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So before the zoning um, variances are considered uh, within the heritage um, application, I'd like to point out that the second thing is the parking. So the parking um, is, um, as we all know, uh, should be six for six parking spots off street for a triplex. However, the applicant has requested a variance down to four. Um, and I'm very strongly in op opposition to, th to this um, because we already have a, a parking problem on St. David Street, an on-street parking problem. Um, as mentioned, we, ha are, we have a, a six-unit townhome, which is across the street from my house, as well as there's lots of apartment buildings on Newport. And um, those cars are often parked in front of my home as well as the neighboring homes leading up to the subject. Uh, they block driveways both on the, on the opposite side of the road, making it very difficult to see backing out of driveways. Um, and in addition, um, I have two children. My youngest child is deaf. And um, the thought of her running out um, and there being inappropriate visibility due to all the parked cars is something I live with every day. So I think you can appreciate that. Um, so I, I really strongly oppose the, um, specifically the four unit, the variance to the four parking stalls, and I would ask to see that revised um, to the required six. Um, and just to address, there was a point earlier made about no um, parking problems reported. Um, my husband and I have made a number of calls to bylaw since we've purchased the home in 2013 regarding cars not only parked for days and days um, in spots of low visibility for us, but also across the driveway, including a commercial vehicle that we had towed um, approximately two years ago. So bylaw was able to, to um, issue that, to, to move it out of our way. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, so the, thir the third point I really wanted to um, comment on, and it's been touched on already today, um, is the official community plan and how we need to follow um, what's, what's in there. And I just wanted to read, um, I mean, I'm sure you know this inside and out, but uh, there was a key point I wanted to highlight. Um, and then I'm going to read some something from my appraisal text just that I think would also help. Um, so why do we need an official community plan? This is page four. Um, and the second and third bullet points, it will guide decisions by council when considering applications for development. So that's why we're here today. And it will guide the decisions of private landowners, on developers, and other authorities. And those decisions need to be uh, around, this is an established neighborhood, St. David Street, um, as we know, has beautiful stately homes and uh, is, pr is primarily single family and should remain that way. Um, the, the only other point I wanted to make, I know my time's probably almost up, um, is I wanted to just touch on the spot zoning uh, or zoning mix argument that has been raised. And from an appraisal theory standpoint, um, the previous speakers are absolutely right. Um, any zoning that is primarily single family is typically a positive attribute um, to the neighborhood. And mixed density residential, so in this case, adding a triplex into single family all the way along the block, uh, with the exception of the townhouses, we know about that, um, tends to have a negative influence on the detached houses in a district. The addition of higher densities, such as duplexes, fourplexes, or row houses, 
and I would add triplexes in here as well, it's not listed, but that's part of it, uh, tend to increase traffic flow, parking requirements, and can lead to amenity overuse. So it, that argument has been raised, it will probably be raised by my neighbors, but that in and of itself is um, appraisal theory, and none of us want to um, have a decrease in our land values as a result of this decision that's unjust. So thank you very much. Thank I you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, would the next speaker come forward, please? Uh, no, uh, the, on the microphone itself. There oh. we go. Thank you. And I'm welcome. Dr. James Stocktill. I live at 1397 St. David Street and have lived at this address since 1983. In fact, almost directly across the street from the Holman Question 1416 St. David Street. Mayor and Council Members, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I will begin by stating that I am steadfast in my opposition to bylaw 4730 that would allow the establishment of a multifamily triplex with parking and height variances in the neighborhood of St. David Street, now zoned single family. My opposition stems from issues related to parking congestion, loss of the neighborhood character, the heritage value of the community, a transient population that has no commitment or investment in the district, and a reduction in both lifestyle, sense of community, and monetary values for homes and their inhabitants surrounding 1416 St. David. Now, no one would deny that the property in question is derelict. Paint is peeling off, wood is rotting, windows are broken, and the garden has not been properly attended to for years. Is this not a typical ploy of a developer? Let the structure and property deteriorate then use this eventuality as leverage for redevelopment and subsequently a variance that would apply uh, to that property alone. The official community plan or OCP must be the one single vision to guide us as we move forward. So what does it have to say? Quote, Oak Bay is defined by its attractive residential neighborhoods and a strong sense of community. The broad primary objective is to follow the existing patterns of land use, unquote. Quote, accommodate future growth in general in areas that are already developed, unquote. In fact, if increased density becomes an established goal for Oak Bay, the OCP directs those densities to be, quote, in existing villages, commercial areas, and multi-unit residential zones, unquote. Of note, it does not include increased densities in single-family residential zones. Quote, successful infill housing must be carefully planned, to minimize impact on adjacent properties, neighborhood character, traffic safety, parking, trees, landscape, overshadowing property, property values are concerns that are often raised by existing residents. In the survey of the Oak Bay population for the OCP, the inclusion of triplexes in single family residential zones was considered one of the top five least acceptable housing options. And what is to be gained by adding additional suites to 1416 St. David Street? The OCP states, quote, secondary suites satisfy, satisfy the needs of only a small section of the population who want rental living. Many people, particularly older people, regard secondary suites as unsuitable for their needs, lifestyle, or expectations, unquote. Finally of interest, the OCP states, prior to considering the infill housing, the district will need to develop criteria guidelines which to review proposals and evaluate their contextual fit in consultation with the public, unquote. I spoke with the district's planning department yesterday. No such criteria or guidelines have been established. In other words, in regards to bylaw 4730, there is no process to follow. Decisions in this regard, therefore, must be considered arbitrary. My advice to council is that as a physician, I have learned, when in doubt, do nothing. I now change tack. Three weeks ago, I had a discussion with a member of the Heritage Committee. They told me that this bylaw had already passed. They said, in effect, that it was a slam dunk. They went on to say that the Heritage Committee was intent upon preserving old homes. Architectural significance was apparently not an issue. 
They also said that if the developer did not get her way, she could tear the current building down and build two homes on the site. Well, they can't because the property in question is not subdividable. But this issue raises a concern. It is, though, okay, I'm glad you're open to my home being designated heritage, but what's in it for me? How about a couple of extra suites? It's like I made a donation to the United Appeal. Here is some money, but could I use one of your offices for a while? Perhaps use one of your trucks for moving furniture? Or on the other hand, what if I gave my wife a Christmas present and then asked, what can you do for me? I'm sure she's smiling. Seeking heritage approval should be in the form of a gift to the district. It should not have strings attached. Now, I'm not suggesting that the mayor sat down with the developer in the back room of the penny farthing to work out a deal. However, there does appear to be an implied contract here, driven by manipulation and fear. The trouble is the only ones paying for this deal are the rest of the homeowners on the street. If council allows this proposal, to which we are fighting passage, every single family neighborhood will be in developer's crosshairs. For those who are standing up today, I see us like the canary in the coal mine. I implore council, as our two-year-old grandson Dexter Stockdale would say, stop. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stockdale. I'm in the penny farthing fairly regularly, but I don't think I met anybody in the back room there, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell your wife that then. She'll be pleased. Uh, will the next speaker please come forward? My name is this one, is on? Yes, it is. Yes. My name is Gordon Houston. I'm a resident of 1321 St. David Street. I think Dr. Stockton missed his calling. He should have been a lawyer. <laughs> uh, this evening, I'd like to uh, uh, say, first of all, I submitted uh, two letters to council, uh, one for my wife and one for myself. And my wife is unable to be here, so, but she asked me to make a few points for her, uh, and I'll proceed to do so. My wife is concerned about the approval of the uh, triplex at this location uh, because it will result in more vehicles being on the street. The proposal is to have parking for only four. Uh, it seems likely that uh, the remaining vehicles, whatever they might be, will end up parked on St. David Street. Uh, like the, one of the earlier speakers, uh, I can say that I complained about parking on St. David Street probably 20 years ago and probably 15 years ago and probably 10 years ago, uh, mostly because residents on Newport <coughs> in some of the uh, larger condominium projects don't have sufficient parking in their places, so they tend to come over and park on St. David Street. It's just it's convenient for them. But the parking isn't just the only problem. It's the continuous flow of traffic down the street. I think uh, there was a, an earlier suggestion again, probably 15 or 20 years ago, that maybe we would put in a speed bump to try to slow people down. A lot of people like to go down St. David Street at a, a pretty good clip, and that is disturbing for anybody who has children uh, or pets. My wife's concerned not only about the heritage value of a building, but she's also concerned about the gardens and the neighborhood and the overall effect on the community. Uh, this proposal does not propose to increase the footprint. At least I don't understand that it's going to increase the footprint. But it is going to cause uh, additional vehicles to be on the street, which means additional carbon admissions, which means additional pro problems with traffic and parking. Uh, for that reason, she opposes it, and I, I also oppose it. My own point of view is uh, somewhat more focused. Uh, and it's on the provisions of the Local Government Act, and in particular, the provisions of the Local Government Act that deal with legal non-conforming uses. A legal non-conforming use is a privilege. You, uh, if you have a legal non-conforming use, it's because you don't comply with the law. But the Municipal Act, or the, sorry, the Local Government Act, allows you to have that. However, there are numerous provisions in the Local Government Act that impose restrictions on the use of a legal non-conforming property. You cannot expand the use throughout the, the building. You cannot 
continue the use if you discontinue it, if you're not using it after six months. Uh, and if there's a fire and it's 75% destroyed, you can't rebuild at that. So there are, there are sections 529, 530, and section 531, which also provides for restrictions on alterations and repairs to the building. These provisions of the Local Government Act act as a restrictive covenant on a property owner's legal nonconforming use. And the beneficiaries of that covenant are the neighbors who live around the property. My point is, council must be very careful to bargain away the benefits and the protections that the neighborhood enjoys provided to them by the Local Government Act for a heritage designation, which is uh, laudable, uh, although in this case, uh, perhaps not so laudable. And they should be careful to make sure that the, the entire neighborhood is considered as part of the heritage. And I think you've heard various people talk about the homes on St. David and how people have taken care of them. I have personally employed uh, heritage joineries to replace some of the woodwork on my building, uh, special lead, stained, lead, pla lead paned windows, all at great cost, I might add. Um, the point being, it is something that must, must not be traded away easily. And I believe that although the Local Government Act clearly provides for a legal nonconforming use to be under a heritage conservation agreement changed, it doesn't mean you have to. It gives you a discretion. And you must weigh very carefully the benefits and the detriments that are going to happen to the neighborhood. And I think you're hearing, you're hearing very clearly tonight that there are a lot of detriments. The other point that I think has already been made, but I think I'll make it as well, is this looks to be spot rezoning under the guise of heritage revitalization. Spot rezoning is something that causes uncertainty with respect to zoning bylaws, uncertainty with respect to the, uh, the official community plan. It, it makes the neighborhood unsettled. People don't know whether they can rely on zoning anymore. They don't know whether they can rely on what's contained in the official community plan. This very much looks like a good business deal and not a good heritage decision. Those are my comments. Thank you very much. I let you go a little long because it looked like you were wrapping up there, so that was good. Oh, I anticipated okay. correctly. It's, uh, it's an effect I've used quite effectively <laughs> in court. Uh, if the next speaker wishes to come forward, please do so now. Good evening. Hello. Yeah. It's on, yes. Hello, my name is Kim Curran. I reside at 1392 St. David Street. I am uh, just south of the property, south of the property in question. Um, I oppose. Uh, my husband and I moved our family to Victoria in August of 2013. After touring Victoria, we decided that we would purchase a home in Oak Bay because of the wonderful feeling of small town, lovely streets, and quiet sense of community it has. We love the gentle bustle of the village and comfortable quiet of the streets. Our home at 1392 St. David is uh, the second and hopefully last home for us in Oak Bay. We love the street we live on for all of the reasons we fell in love with Oak Bay. The wide spaces, the oaks that grace the street, the quiet and solitude of our neighborhood. We knew that the official city plan, the OCP, designated the properties on our street as single family, a large reason for the wonderful feeling of the street. Our 1912 home required updating and renovation to make it seismically, electrically, and mechanically sound, as well as many other cosmetic repairs that enhance the livability of the home. We, like many, many homeowners in Oak Bay, spent a great deal of money on the renovation and never once asked Oak Bay for any compensation by way of bonus density, variances, or grants. The proponents of this spot rezoning are asking you to buy their renovation by granting them bonus density. What they are asking you to do is give them value of approximately a half million dollars. We never asked for any compensation or favors from Oak Bay because we understood that as homeowners buying into a single family zoned street, it was up to us to maintain our single family home. 
a home we are happy to maintain because we respect our neighbors, the OCP, and value the beautiful ambience that attracted us to the street. We don't want more garbage cans on garbage day, more cars on the street, putting our kids at risk, taking up parking, or more noise pollution from f three families living in what was constructed as a single family home. My concern goes beyond just the house next door to the rest of my street and to all of Oak Bay, that if this spot rezoning is approved, it will create a domino effect that will so profoundly change the face and ambiance of Oak Bay that the feeling of this neighborhood will be stripped away. If Oak Bay wants to increase density, then they need to call on its residents to come together and agree on a new OCP that properly plans for and allows for agreed upon reasonable rezoning solutions. If spot rezoning is allowed to go forward, it is a bit like Russian roulette for home owners. Who knows if the home next to you or across the street from you will be spot rezoned, a change that can only negatively affect the value of the neighboring homes. We need to respect the current OCP zoning so that residents can buy and invest in their homes with confidence that the rules next door won't suddenly change. Please respect the families living in Oak Bay by showing us that our families, our homes, and our neighborhood have value and are worth protecting under the current OCP. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next speaker to come forward. Red's on. Mayor Murdoch and councillors, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Deborah Stockdale. My address is 1397 St. David Street, across the street from 1416. I am opposed to the pro proposed development of 1416 St. David Street and would personally like to see it returned to a single family dwelling. We have lived at St. David Street for 36 and a half years. We moved as a young couple into our home in 1983, nine years after the Bowmans. We raised four children at this address. The Bowmans, with their daughter Charlotte, lived on the main floor of 1416 St. David Street. Charlotte's nanny slash caregiver, Ada, lived above the Bowmans, her address being 1418 St. David Street. Ada lived there for 40 years until her health deteriorated and she was hospitalized. She continued to live in the suite long after Mr. Bowman died and Charlotte Bowman moved out of town. We had been told by Charlotte years ago that she and her father agreed that Ada could live out her life in the suite and they honoured their promise to her long after she was no longer needed as a nanny. Once Ada was no longer able to live in the suite, Charlotte indicated her intention was to return the house back to a single family home. The irony of this application is that for 30 plus years, the arrangement across the street from us at 1416 St. David Street appeared to be an extended family of never more than five people living there together, not individuals, not couples and not families living in two, diff two, du two du duplexes. Charlotte da David Bowman died in February 2012 and Charlotte Bowman moved to Salt Spring Island that year as well. That was seven years ago. Much has happened to St. David Street since then. Although some of us have lived for many years on this street enjoying our single dwelling forever homes, there have been many sales. There are now young couples who plan to have babies and families with young children who have settled on this peaceful street for the same reason. Please, let single family homes remain on St. David Street as they were designed to be. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stockdill. Uh, with the next speaker, Benny, come forward this time. Uh, 
it's on and just if you may point it at your mouth so it's okay. uh makes thank it you mayor and council welcome um, I am not as articulate or as knowledgeable as the previous speakers, and I agree with everything that has been said so far. Can I just get you um, to say your, state your name sorry. and municipality um, residence on the My name is Linda McFarlane, and I Thank am you. the owner and resident of 1387 St. David Street, uh, Kitty Corner to um, 1416. I have lived all my life in South Oak Bay with a couple of short detours, as did my parents, grandparents, great-grandmother, a number of aunts and great aunts. We all lived here because we loved the area. We purchased our home in 1983, partly because we liked the house, but also because of the atmosphere of the neighborhood. Over the years, many people told us they thought St. David was one of the nicest streets around. We have all worked hard and made sacrifices to afford to live here and raise our families. Based on what we have spent, on our renovations, I would conservatively estimate that at least $2 million plus has been spent in the last uh, several years to upgrade a number of homes, at least six in the immediate area. If this proposal is approved, there is a good possibility these gains would be considerably reduced. This is the thin edge of the wedge which would precipitate a domino effect throughout the neighborhood. I don't think council, some of whom campaigned against spot zoning would drop a triplex mid-block in the uplands. Why here? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Portland. Um, next speaker, please. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Joanne Turner. I reside at 1324 St. David Street in the municipality of Oak Bay. Uh, my husband and I purchased the house in 2001 and we are opposed to the pending development. Um, and just for the record, apparently we voted as neutral but nobody ever approached either my husband or I for our input. Uh, since May of this year, there's been a notice of a pending development proposal on the boulevard in front of the above mentioned property. Um, and. Uh, we have several concerns over the application. My concerns are twofold. Firstly, precedence. Um, as this is a single family street, the danger if this application is successful is that other properties could seek similar variances from the zoning. It would effectively change the character of one of the most desirable streets in South Oak Bay. And my second concern is the parking, which is extremely uh, busy at the moment, it's uh, quite dangerous. Um, I have been almost hit twice by cars coming down, trying to get between cars on either side of the road coming down the middle. Um, I spent many, many years in Kitsilano and I'm seeing Kitsilano on our street. Um, there's a lot of the residents of the condominiums at the Oak Bay Tower, 1400 Newport Avenue that currently park their vehicles also on our street which was mentioned earlier, they probably don't have the facilities to park their cars, so they're coming over to our street. Um, again, I don't have all of the expertise to speak to this, except what I want to say, it's a wonderful block that we live on. We love our street. It's a community of friends. We have a collective respect for each other, and we admire the homes that each of us has taken great pride in. We work hard to maintain our homes and value the community feeling that has grown amongst all of us. We are all friends, we have block parties, we have Christmas get-togethers, and we have socials for newcomers to the block. And I would hate to see St. David Street change and go in a direction that is opposite to what we currently have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would the next speaker come forward? Thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Bruce McFarlane. I live at 1387 St. David. And I must apologize. I left my glasses at home, so I can't read my notes. So it's sort of off the cuff. Uh, this picture was shown of uh, 1416 is certainly not what I've looked at for the last 35 years. Uh, it uh, is, a, to my mind, and the way it looks now, if you drive down the street, it's a barn with a tin roof. Perhaps it would it would be enhanced. I I somewhat doubt that. 
What I believe is happening is the uh, application for heritage is an effort by the current owner to leverage uh, a non-conforming duplex into a triplex, which uh, is not in the best interest of, of our community. Uh, what worries me, if we're talking about heritage, and it's a lot of the stuff I'm going to say has been uh, said before, uh, heritage isn't just an old building, it's community. I've lived in this community for 75, no, more than 75 years, and uh, community is single-family dwellings in Oak Bay. My parents lived, lived here. My wife, obviously, has lived here and her uh, family longer than I. Uh, I don't want to see that changed. Spot zoning, as has been suggested, is a uh, thin ed edge of a wedge and will be a detriment to our entire community. So please vote against this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McFarland. Will the next speaker come forward? If any. Oh. I think this is on. It yeah. is. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Denise of Dekimoff, and I live at 1472 St. David Street. So that's right at the end of St. David Street. Um, I oppose this application. I actually really struggled with this. In principle, as a, an, an individual, I actually believe in thoughtful um, densification. So at first I was quite on the fence about it, but I also believe in proper process. And I think that we need to have a proper process that respects where that densification occurs. To me, this feels like spot rezoning. And I think that we need to have something that's a little bit more thoughtful in terms of corridors. This particular corner is really problematic. It's the corner with um, Corbett's Corner. And not once, but twice, I have seen cars go up on that uh, Corbett's Corner. It's difficult to particularly get out of St. David's Street and then to get back into it. It's um, challenging for a lot of the elderly population of Oak Bay. So I don't think that this is the right place for this type of densification. I think that we need to be thoughtful as we proceed in densification. And I think that due to the reasons that I've just stated, I think this application needs to be turned down. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Just, if you could just write your name down on the sheet of paper as well, so we have the correct spelling, that would be appreciated. Uh, any other speakers wish to come forward? Hi, I guess I'm the bad guy in the room tonight. <laughs> My name is Charlotte. No Bowman. such thing, just uh... <laughs> And I am the owner of 1416 St. David Street. And I'll be the first to admit that yes, the current state of the house is not at all acceptable. And there are a number of reasons. And with the loss of my father, it was very hard for me to even be in the house. And so things did leave did get left out and I do apologize for that and anyways I'd like the opportunity to just say where I'm coming from obviously I have not done a good job <laughs> maybe with my neighbors so anyways um, this house has been in my family for over 40 years and I have lived in it for over 30 of those 40 years I do I currently live I lived on Salt Spring, but my daughter this year has started school in Victoria at GNS, and so we were hoping to be in the house in September because I did not realize this process was going to be as time-consuming as it was. But anyways, so we are currently residing in Victoria and do hope to bring the family back to the house when and if we get approval. Anyways. Um, my objective with this heritage Re revitalization agreement is to preserve the integrity of a heritage home and that has been in my family for over 40 years and by bringing it into the modern age. The house is almost 5,000 square feet and I'm a family of three. And as an environmentalist, I find it very difficult to justify living in that type of square footage. So 
for my family, it, I, I felt it, if I could live in part of the house and also provide some alternative housing within the municipality, it was kind of a win-win. And so that was, you know, I want to create a smaller environmental footprint. So for me, this, you know, it was is create a smaller environmental footprint and there's a need for creative long-term um, rental housing. And so, you know, I inherited the house it's my goal to pass the house on to my daughter. So I mean, I know I'm being portrayed as a developer and I know it is under a development application, but I really um, <laughs> am not a developer. <laughs> so anyways, that's just where I'm coming from in kind of my um, reasoning for doing this. And I, I love the house and I mean, it might not look like it now, but you know, it's, it's always been my dream to restore it and I am looking forward to one way or another being able to do that to the house. So thank you for <laughs> the time and I hope that you all see the merits of this proposal and can support it. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Yes, please write your name down. Thank you. Is there uh, anybody else who wishes to come forward? I'm, I will, oh. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Pam Copley, and I reside at 1925 Brighton Avenue in the city of Victoria. But um, um, recently, until recently, a year ago actually, I lived in Oak Bay for over 40 years, So, and also served on Council for nine of those years. So, um, so I've heard many things tonight. Um, I also lived in a large single-family um, home and uh, spent a lot of time, energy, and um, um, effort to uh, keep it up and bring it up to standards. Um, I think the notion of single family, there, there's a, a broad spectrum between single family and uh, someone mentioned a transient population. I see no evidence of that, uh, that taking place. It seems that Ms. Bowman is, has also been um, uh, in that, in that, on that property and a part of that family for a very long time and intends it to continue in the family. So um, perhaps those comments could be perceived as a bit insulting. Uh, with regards to the OCP, um, um, the vision does, it does envision and provide policies to support multifamily housing options, which we are sadly, this municipality and others in Greater Victoria are sadly lacking. So, um, and those are within existing neighborhoods and, and elsewhere along uh, major transportation corridors. Um, also, I'd just like to comment that uh, this type of heritage legis legislation is designed for exactly this type of project. Um, and HRAs do not typically trigger precedents because they're each, they're, they're designed, each one is designed specifically for that specific situation. Um, and there was also a comment about the style, the architectural style of the house and whether or not anyone is, is, has, has heard of it, it is a legitimate and recognized style. And it also does represent the evolution of Oak Bay as a community. So um, um, with regards to parking, parking as long as I can remember has been an issue in every single development, single family and otherwise, and continues to be so. I think the major problem is that the parking bylaw is outdated and needs to be aligned with the OCP vision and policies. Um, the same goes for the OCP not being fully implemented and so we, you, <laughs> continu continually have to deal with spot rezoning. Um, I just, um, I think that there, there was a lot of reference to community. Yes, community is people. Uh, community is what people build together. Um, and so it's not just about property values and, um, and it is good to keep a, a community diverse and that means in terms of income, age, and, and all kinds of other factors. And I just finally like to say that housing is not a commodity. It's a right and affordability is a big issue not only in this community but within the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Copley. Anybody else wish to come forward and address council? 
I will call for a second time. Is there anybody who wishes to come forward to address council? I'll call three times and then we'll, uh, we'll adjourn the public input portion just to give people fair warning. Uh, Oh, no, put it, hit it again. There we go. My name is Paul Ziek and I live in Oak Bay. Uh, I was here speaking the other day for another project, uh, 1558 Beach Drive. And uh, it has very, been very interesting and very educational to, for me to uh, listen to uh, some of these very well-spoken individuals uh, from that community on David, D St. David Street. Um, and I can really see their concerns and their issues. I mean, it's very, what, very clear to me what what their what their concerns are, and they're valid. They're very valid. There's there's uh, a few things that I would dispute, but I won't get into that. Um, what I want to talk about is what the last speaker uh, mentioned, and that is affordable housing. Um, we are in the process of being renovated from one place where there was seven homes so that there can be one vanity home built. Um, and I did some research and I've been looking at the uh, Oak Bay community plan, the official community plan, and more than once it talks about how important diverse housing is, uh, affordable housing is. And so I would like to just comment and ask you to cons have that in the back of your mind while you're making the decision about this property on St. David Street. While I value and respect all of the neighborhood's concerns, um, I also want you to consider people that are seeking and desperately in need of decent, affordable housing. Thank you. Please uh, write your name down as well so we have it. Correct spelling, thank you. Uh, so, so please come forward. Make it clear everybody's welcome to come forward and speak here tonight. So I don't. Um, the reason for this process, the first, second, and third ask, is just to make sure everybody has uh, opportunity to come forward and address council. Uh, it's on. Yep. You just go ahead and uh, state your name and municipality and, and kick it off. Thank you. Um, Name is uh, Eric Mignot, and I live in Oak Bay. Um, I approve uh, what is uh, on the table tonight. I approve because, yes, I believe we need more housing options in Oak Bay. And uh, I am uh, also uh, renting in Oak Bay, and I, I felt the struggle of finding a, a place to live with the, within this beautiful community. Um, and I approve, yes, because, uh, yes, we like old houses, even if people here reminded us tonight that heritage is not only about old houses, but we like them because they're beautiful. And if we keep them and allow rentals in it, I believe it's a win-win. I believe it's a win-win because the alternative that, by the way, we are all facing in this 1558 Beach Drive, the alternative is that perhaps if she has no other option, the current owner could think about selling this property. And guess what? A developer, which, which is not, could just buy it and try to make the point that they have no option to keep the property and just tear it down, just like we are facing this in our home. And this is why I believe we have here an opportunity to, to embrace the, not the change of the whole Oak Bay, but just to recognize and acknowledge that yes, the population of Oak Bay has changed. A lot of people are coming to this wonderful island and giving them this opportunity to just live here within those rentals uh, units within those beautiful houses, keeping the outside looking of the house, not destroying everything and build the 10 floors. Building is not the point. Sh this, this person is proposing to keep the character of this house, and this is what we all like here. 
I approve also because we have spoken about community here. And yes, the community, I believe, is not only one street. It's not only one city. At the end of the day, it's the community is about the humans all being willing to live together. And so, yes, I understand that some people could be afraid to see their daily um, life change. But as a community, we also have this responsibility to welcome uh, people that are just struggling in trying to find a place to live. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Please write down your name if you can. Just Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to come forward to address council at this time? I'm still going to consider this my second call for, for people to come forward. And uh, for a third and final time, if anybody wishes to come forward to address council, this is the last chance before we adjourn this public hearing. Seeing none, thank you all very much for coming out, speaking so eloquently and, uh, and respectfully and uh, bringing forth all your, all your ideas and concerns. So very much appreciated. Um, we are now at the end of this. The public hearing is closed. Is there a requirement to do a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Yes, so if I get a motion, moved. Move adjournment. Second, thank you. All those in favor, opposed, none opposed. Just to give people a chance to stretch, uh, we'll take a three minute break or so and uh, we'll reconvene here to start the council meeting. Oh, I didn't read the rest of it. <laughs>